right, well, thank you, Marcia. Uh, thank you very much. Um, music always tunes our heart, makes our hearts ready to receive the Word of God as uh, it comes from our speaker. Well, as I mentioned, this is a great day here at Faith Bible Church because our speaker this morning grew up right here in our church. And somehow, our ministry in Sunday school and junior church, and my ministry during the uh, church service, Somehow it all instilled in him a desire to teach the Word of God, and now that desire has come to fruition, hasn't it? You know, that reminds me to say, when you see these kids running around here on Sunday, I hope you pray for them, and take the time to get to know them. And let, you, let them know that you love them and care for them and want to encourage them because you never know. That little boy just might grow up to be the next Oscar. Or that little girl might grow up to be the next Myrtle. Or the mother of the next Oscar. But now it is time to introduce this Oscar. Oscar is a man who has shown faithfulness in every area of the ministry that he's been engaged in here at our church. Uh, from helping me give the church a deep cleaning during the lockdown, he was here faithfully many days for that. To traveling to a conference in Arkansas with me to get a feel for a Grace Church in another state. and. And, um, and right on down to teaching the adult Sunday school class. That's, he's really the reason we instituted the rotation is because I mentioned to Pastor Balbach who was teaching regularly, I said, you know, we've got to give this young man a chance to speak, but we didn't want to put the pressure on him of being the guy who speaks all the time. So we came up with the rotation and uh, I've got to say, from what I've seen in his messages, he has the same desire that I've always had, to know the truth and make it known. So come on up and make known the truth that uh, you have for us this morning. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning again. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thankful for that and introducing me. Uh, as you know, my name is Oscar Ochoa. I'm deeply and greatly honored to be in front of you guys. This um, being in front of here, always being over there and seeing the person here, it's like, you know, it's just, it's a milestone and it's just a big moment for me just to be up here before you guys. Grace Believers, this church, you know, as the Apostle Paul says, the church starts at starts in, is the local church you know the, the things start here so I'm grateful um, I'm thankful to Pastor Kurt for even giving me a chance and you know seeing that he that I was able to even to be a part of this uh, and I'm just gonna give my little thanks on because this is the first time I've been up here and this is a to me it's a grand stage you know to you know this is the local church it's bigger than the stadium it's more important it's got, you know, we're handling God's word in such a, it's so important, it's such a high calling and it's such a serious calling to handle God's word and to, at the best of your abilities, rightly divide it and to share it, like Pastor Kurt was saying. So I'm definitely grateful to be up here and I got to give my thanks out because this is my first time. So, you know, the next time I come up, I probably won't, but um, I, uh. Like I said, my name's Oscar Ochoa. I grew up in East Chicago, Indiana. I graduated in Crown Point, and I've been here since a kid. Uh, my uncle, my father, and my grandmother are the ones who helped me a lot and getting me here and showing me 
stuck through. Miss Myrtle, Miss uh, Mr. Thornton, Pastor Kirk, all the teachers. Vern, when he was here, I remember him. And uh, those things stick through because I left the church for many years. And I was like Demas, who loved the world and went out and did things that they weren't supposed to, you know, being worldly. And by the grace of God, I've come back. And I'm going to come back strong. So I'm going to come back strong for the Lord, for everyone here, for my family. I want to give a spe uh, special shout out to my wife and my two stepkids that they've been there for me ever since we've met. And they have my back all the way. So I'm grateful for that. I love them. And um, uh, Paul Belbach, Ray Seiler, everyone here, Sue, Ed, you know, he's with the Lord. Dave, he's with the Lord. All the teachers here. I want to get this out because it's that important because the local church is that important. Everybody here. Stacy, uh, Tracy, I mean. And then uh, <laughs> Bill, Lori, you know. Uh, everyone here. So there's a, it's, a, it's an honor for me because it's that big of a deal. Handling God's word is a big deal. And this is in any situation. Whether you're sharing it with somebody on the street or whether you're sharing it with family members. Um, it's a dream come true. You know, and this is like I said, this is a grand scale in my eyes, because this is and and as we grow in grace, we want it to be grander and grander, to to share the word and to become more knowledgeable in God's work, because that's what He asks of us. You know, and um, I uh, I thank you for that. So, um, and I don't, I know people remember when they were saved, but I don't. I, don't, I know people have a date, but I don't remember, but I'm glad I'm saved now anyway, so, you know, so I'm glad for that. I don't know when it happened, but it happened, and I'm here, and I'm going to go full throw with everything, so, um, today we're going to be in, uh, today's message is uh, the heroes of faith. It's, we all know that uh, Hebrews chapter 11 is the, the heroes chapter, but, um, Today we will talk about some men and women that were faithful to God. This chapter is sometimes called the Heroes of Faith and uh, the Saints Hall of Fame. Hopefully today's review will help us in our faithful walk with Christ. Um, a little story. So Henry Ford was creating the V8 engine. Uh, a lot of his his uh, engineers were saying it's impossible you can't make a v8 engine you can't make a v8 engine it can't be done and he's like just keep doing it they came two few months six months a year they kept coming to him saying we can't do it he's like don't come back to me until you can do it so he came back and finally it got done you know and uh he didn't give up he had faith and he had the courage to keep going and do that i have another story um it's called the four minute mile run by uh, Roger Bannister. They said that you couldn't run under four minutes. And that, and that it was impossible that you could run a, run a mile in four minutes. So they said it was impossible. They said your lungs will explode. <laughs> and yeah, there was a bunch of things. And this is what, this is what people, they have this idea that they don't know. And that, you know, some this guy had the courage and he worked hard and he had faith that he was able to run he ran the mile in three minutes and 59 seconds now this was done in uh, May 6th of 1954 since then people have been breaking this record so the point is is that there, you're gonna have people that are gonna come up with all kinds of things saying that it can't be done and that it's impossible but we know with God all things are possible so those are just two stories that were deemed impossible but now are you know and um, that's, you know, and then some point in there with my life, it felt that way. But now I don't. So because I've served, I'm choosing to serve the Lord, rightly divided, and give, put my confidence in Him. And that's what we should all do. And try to do anyway. So, yeah, these men had courage and faith. So, uh and we all have heroes ourselves, so now we're into the heroes. Um, there's superheroes. I mean, there's all types of superheroes. We got Captain America. We got the Hulk. I mean, a lot of these you got the gods of of, of uh, Egypt. You know, you got Zeus and all them. A lot of them come from Genesis six, the men of renown. It's probably a thing stemming from all the way back then. But uh, 
you got the for the video gamers there's the hero of time link there's uh you know there's goku there's kratos there's all type of people okay and then there's movie stars people look have heroes and movie stars uh youtubers businessmen um you know and then they, uh, they have uh even which is good that children look up to their fathers you know and people look up to their mothers people look up to their grandfathers you know people who did some did a good thing and uh, you know they stand it up they stood up for what was right that's a hero that people look up to so we all have heroes in our life that we look up to and we like man that, that person's great and um those are the good things i mean and then you have a hall of fame in the sports hall of fame we know we all love those right i mean uh you got michael jordan babe ruth tiger woods all in these different sports you know messi rodanino walter payton mayweather pacquiao rocky marciano i mean it, it just goes on and on and on and uh, one of my favorites if you guys remember is Frank Thomas the Big Hurt yeah from the White Sox number 35 I remember as a kid he was like my favorite baseball player and uh, obviously Michael Jordan as a kid was my favorite and uh, so we all look up so what is a hero a hero is a person who is admired or I or uh, I idolized for courage outstanding achievements or noble qualities so that's a that's kind of basic definition of a hero um, for all Christians our ultimate hero is the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior uh, and our and the Savior is a synonym for hero and um, so we know that he saved us from eternal damnation that's our true one and true hero that he has saved us from what we deserve and he paid the price for us um, my question for you to meditate on while we go through these verses is have you or will you be a hero to faith of God a hero of faith to God and help serve others um, and do you remember when someone was a hero and faithful to you in life or they shared the gospel so think of these things in terms of yourself while well, we're going through these heroes that God deemed they believed and they were counted as for work as for righteousness and um, just think of that while we're doing it so Hebrews chapter 1 let's start oh Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 <laughs> getting a little dyslexic here huh all right and we all know these we all know these this is a breakdown to see within ourselves can we be a hero for uh, others can we have the faith that God God wants us to be faithful can we apply these things and do this in the name all in the name of the Lord and wh whatever he asks us to do for this dispensation are we going to do it so Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so that substance is you can also say that it's things that count things that that which counts so faith counts okay uh, substance is like the core of something we can see it like that so um, how do you know when you don't see it it's by faith if you don't see anything and you know you gotta have faith so uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen that is the definition of faith the Bible gives verse 2 for by for by it the elders obtained a good report so those are the Old Testament patriarchs they had faith and God seen that and gave them a good they had a good report with the Lord verse 3 now this verse always gets to me because it's such a powerful verse when I hear it but through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear so by this faith that things which count the things that even the old patriarchs had we have faith that this verse is saying that the Lord Jesus Christ himself spoke the worlds into existence and that it was made from nothing it wasn't from a chemistry set it wasn't from something that he just bobbled up and made and put together he actually just spoke it and it became now we all know these things but 
That's what this. That's what that verse says. And we're supposed to have faith in that, not in evolution, not in that anything else. There's no men are always trying to find the origins of, of you know the universe. Well, here it is, right here. We don't need to look no forward, because that is what that is. Lord's made the worlds from nothing. Made he just it just came to be. Um, and it is by Jesus. Psalm 33 verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth. So that's everything he made, the angels, the, the stars, the planets, by the breath of his mouth they came to be. Um, our God is a mighty God we serve, amen? And um, he's omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. So that means he's all-powerful, all-knowing, in all presence uh yeah so that's uh that means he's a complete and all-powerful god um hebrews 4 13 says neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight all things are naked and opened to him you can't hide from god this guy knows where every single individual is that's breathing that's organic he knows where you're at he knows what you're doing uh, Matthew 10 30 says but the very hairs of your head are all numbered I mean hey this guy can number every hair everybody's <laughs> yeah I'm starting to run out but <laughs> but anybody else I mean just um, how many individuals here you can number all your heads and all the billions that are in the world that shows power Isaiah 40 and we're going we're going over the attributes of how powerful God is As Isaiah 40 verse 28 the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding he never gets tired the guy he's he's the Lord is constant and never gets tired and that's just a show of his power uh, 1 Peter 3 8 says one day is with the Lord as a thousand years I mean without we think of a thousand years like dang that's a long time it's just like one day to the Lord and it's just an un, he, it's unfathomable Psalms 147 verse uh, 147 and verse 4 he tell it he telleth the number of the stars he calleth them all by their names he names every single star and can tell what they are and he got some in his hand Psalm 44 verse 21 he knoweth the secrets of the heart you can't hide what's in here to him he can go he can see it he's seeing it now so that's that is showing his power and um, this is the God we serve and to be faithful to this is the faith that the heroes had because they had it they understood that this was God that all that power in that in that the Lord Jesus Christ and God is the true hero um, and I'm gonna go to 2 Samuel verse 22 verse 3 I'm just gonna say it the God of my rock in him will I trust he is my shield and the horn of my salvation that's the Lord Jesus my high tower and my refuge my Savior that's my hero that's what David and our scripture reading today David when he was his own he, when he slew that giant he looked up to his hero which is God God was this hero, the all-powerful God that we serve. And um, I want to bring that up because David is a big figure in the Bible. And he was very, he was, um, he, he was a man after God's own heart. So God seen, this guy, was, I mean, you seen as a kid, he was killing lions and bears. I mean, there's not many kids that do that today. He had a, you know, they, it's that expression, he had a heart of gold and he was, he was, he was he he had the stuff. So uh, Isaiah forty three verse eleven says, "I even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no salvation. There is nothing that you can do to save yourself after you die after you leave this this planet. If you when you die and you're not saved, like uh, Ray Siler did a great a great um, Sunday school message today, and if I encourage you to watch it." Maybe on YouTube because he there's you're either gonna go to hell or you're gonna go to heaven and there's and there is no salvation besides the Lord and uh, uh, and then one more First Thessalonians five twenty four faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it well God says he does 
whenever he says he's going to do, he's going to do it and he does it. So uh, now that we've seen about God's power and his faithfulness and why we should be faithful to him, we go to verse 4 in Hebrews. So I wanted to get that out of the way because I'm going to show you what a real hero, what a, you know, the creator of the universe got his stuff. So um, and then we're going to go by individuals that we can look up as well that he got that Hall of Fame going on. So by faith, verse 4 in Hebrews, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous God testifying of his gifts and by and by it he being dead yet speaketh so uh, we all know the Cain and Abel story um, faith is taking God at his word there's another definition of faith faith always prompted God to declare the believer righteous uh, when you have faith in what God says, you are declared a righteous individual. Abel was a spiritual kind. Of, he was the spiritual. He listened to what God said. And he brought a blood offering. Uh, the firstling of the flock was probably a lamb. And Cain is is identified as natural, and he gave a bloodless offering, the first fruits of his labor. So man has been trying to work for his you know for his salvation since Cain and Abel he, he, and Cain here is that the big thing is he had no faith he didn't believe that he should bring a, a blood sacrifice to atone for what that's what God said to do so if you don't that's why God didn't accept his offering because he didn't do what God said to do now that's the first uh, that's a quick obviously it's the first one and it's kind of a you know sets the pace of what is going on in these chapters but Cain was probably a nice guy he probably was a likable guy he probably was good but if you still don't listen to what God says to do then it's then it's over with that's a God God shall not be mocked um, and he probably rationalized I work hard I do this and this and that, but and it's still when you rationalize and, and do these things, God will not accept unless what He asks you to do. Um, uh, just to note, God in different dispensation instructs man to do things differently. For example, during Moses' time and the giving of the law, to be counted faithful, you needed to do animal sacrifices and follow 600 plus laws. So you had a bunch of things there. Um, today we are under a different set of rules that God asked for, for us to be faithful. Today we're, we, he's just asking us to believe and that we're saved. That the Lord Jesus Christ, that we have eternal life and that he saved us from eternal damnation. He wants us to believe the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Uh, we'll go through that in a bit, but he just wants us to believe and you're saved. And then what's in Paul's epistles you is our marching orders for today. But um, and you got Ephesians two eight and nine. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not works, lest any man should boast. It's a plain, plain English. It's the gift of God. You just believe. For so we're, we're saved by grace and uh, through faith, and uh, lest any man should boast, because men would be boasting all day long on what they did. Because uh, I hear it sometimes. And um, so, verse 5, moving forward. Uh, we have Enoch. So we got Abel and we got Enoch. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Uh, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So, uh, I mean, he's here one minute, gone the next. Uh, he's he and the, the idea here is that he pleased God. So he meaning he was a man of faith. So he pleased God and he was a man of faith, whatever his testimony was. So, uh, verse six. But without faith, here's the big one. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he and and believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you diligently seek him today? You know, uh, if you don't have no faith, you ain't you ain't pleasing God. 
a faithless life, a faith where you don't believe that you're going to make it through your day and that you have salvation. God don't like that. He wants you to believe in Him and all His and all His word. So, um, and that's what these heroes of faith did. Abel believed Him. Enoch believed Him. Now we're at Noah. Um, oh, and it, just to add, it, it's, it just says... Uh, it's not giving a lot of money, not giving to a church. Uh, if you don't have faith, because people think that, oh, I give money and I do these things for church. It's not that. It's faith in what God says for today. It's faith. That's, it has nothing to do with the money you give and the tithing and all these things you think is going to be helpful. If you're not believing what God says to do for today, then you're going to be out of luck like Cain. Uh, verse 7. By faith... Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Um, he he was preparing for a flood. Imagine they didn't even, it didn't even rain at that time. So you got a guy where it doesn't rain. You're like, what is that? You're, you got a boat because you know there's a flood coming. And I mean, I'm sure he was felt foolish, scorned, ridiculed, and uh, that's how. If we if we share the gospel today, doesn't people make you feel that way? That when you're following, that you sometimes they try to make you feel that way, where you're like, dang, you know, and, they, and it it mess it hurts. But no one went through this, and he still did it. You know, he probably was. They all looked at him like he was crazy. You're gonna build an ark because what? The whole earth is gonna flood, you know. And it's like, so that was, took big faith on Noah's part. Um, and there was only eight people that believed of the however many there were. I mean, today there's billions, but there was probably close to billions then too. So, um, and it's always that small remnant that believe and. We're part of that remnant, and thank God that we are, and that's why we're trying to outreach and, and try to get others to do that. Um, everyone, yeah, they must have thought he was crazy, and uh, so yeah, that's a quick tidbit on Noah. So, uh, verse eight. Now we're into Abraham. Good old Abraham. All right, so Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. Um, let's go to Romans chapter 4. And we're just going to kind of. So we know Abraham had a lot of things that he he um I mean he he was came out of paganism so for him to believe God there is you know in um Romans chapter 4 and verse 1 Verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. See, uh, if he, it, on that works religion, if he, it's like telling God that you owe me. If you, if you, uh, for if Abraham were justified by works, he hath world to glory, but not before God. See, God, you ain't. It's like if you're working for a God, you owe me now. Because God don't owe nobody, nothing. God is God. He's sovereign. And that's what that verse is saying. It's saying, so, oh, I'm working for what I got going on now. Now you owe me. But we know that's not how that works. Verse 3. For what saith the scripture? What a powerful, what a powerful line that is what does the bible say about any kind of situation in life what does the bible say first um abraham believed god and it was counted unto him for righteousness that's where we get that abraham believed him and it was counted unto him for righteousness it's about believing it's not about any works 
It's about what God, even though sometimes you believe and it has works involved, like when Moses and them, but it's all it has nothing to do with the works that you're doing. It's just believing what God has said. And that um and it's not to bring a sacrifice, it's not to speak in tongues, it's not to join the church, it's not believe and be baptized, it's believe, period. That's it. And today, it's like we said, we're gonna get into it right now. Um and uh verse four now to him that worketh is the re is the reward not reckoned of grace but of death uh, and that's what we were saying we don't God don't, don't owe us nothing it's not this is when you working for something now it's of debt and that God has given us a free gift that we see in Ephesians 2 8 9 and um, um in verse 5 now, now here's the a, a good one. But to him that worketh not, to him that worketh not, there are no works, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. See, and it's not just people who are, you know, God ain't justifying anyone that thinks that they're good enough. You know, I'm good enough. I work for what I, I'm good. God don't justify them person. God justifies the one that believes in what he says. And that's, and it's, might be hard to comprehend but this is what the Bible is saying and the person who says I am a sinner I sin you know I need a savior because we all do and that's where it starts off it's not oh I'm gonna work for I'm gonna do this and God is gonna accept me no you just believe what he says and I stress that because uh, there's m m billions out there that that believe that you know and um so, to, exp to expound on the work it's not, Romans is a book, is a foundational book that gives us our marching orders for today. So we're in Romans right now, and this is our marching orders for today, this is that foundational book. And this, what Romans is saying, we take this to the bank. So this is, so this is our for today. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So, um, it's not me saying it, it's the Bible. So, Hebrews, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 9. Now we're going to get in a little more into the, these, a little more into the heroes now. Alright. No, no, not chat Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 9. Sorry about that. <laughs> See, I still got a little... Uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous up here. But <laughs> I, uh, it's, it's working out well. So I, I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> verse 9. Uh, By faith he sojourned, talking about Abraham still, sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Um, Abraham had faith in a strange land. Uh, they didn't have a written word back then. Uh, and, uh, and I'm sure it was, you know, scary sometimes you know, in, in the strange lands that he was in. Imagine people in other parts of the world today. The, oh, you're a Christian, you go to some parts in the world today, you we probably won't see you again. There's some people, there's there's parts of this world that they persecute Christians and they kill them and they jail them. And we're lucky to be here in America. Blessed. Like, blessed beyond. So, and the powers that be are trying to bring that nonsense here. And trying to bring all that evil here. And um, let's just be grateful and redeem the time that we have. The peace that we have, and uh, we're blessed here in America, and we pray for them that don't have it as good for it as us, you know, don't have it as good for, as we have it. Um, um, so we, uh, I think I'm going to talk about that. So we can, you know, and, and if we want to do something, we can. If we want to be a hero to someone, we could send money out to people, out to missionaries out there, help get Bibles out there, tracks to other countries, Bible tracks to other countries, uh, join the fight for people's souls. And I'm going to get into a little bit more than that later, but um, yeah, let's go to verse 11. 
No. Now we're in with Sarah. Well, we're going to get back to Abraham. Uh, Sarah, and we're just going to talk about Sarah. We know Sarah. She believed, uh, She God said that she was going to have a child in her old age, and she had one. So I imagine people now, they would be like, well, I'm 90 years old. I can't have a child. But back then, the, you know, she she believed, and she had that miraculous birth. Um, I think we're going to jump... We're going to go to verse 13. And um, verse 13 of Hebrews. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims uh, on the earth. So these uh, these patriarchs, even all the way up to... Um, even with Moses and all these other uh, characters, they didn't see the promises. They didn't see the Savior. They knew that they were promised us, uh, a Savior, but they didn't see the Messiah. They knew that they were promised a kingdom of uh, heaven on earth. They didn't see him. They didn't see the kingdom. And the kingdom hasn't yet come. Um, they were promised. Uh, they were promised eternal life in that kingdom of heaven on earth. Uh, and um, so there was a lot of promises, even. I don't think Abraham even made it to the promised land. And he didn't see that, or he didn't see the multitude that God promised him of his kin. He didn't see that the great nation of Israel. So these are promises that he didn't even, he just believed in that he, and you know, he's the father of the Jews. And we thank God that he believed because all these are coming together now. And we know that God is, you know, it's my Bible. Um, God follows through on his promises. Um, and we're going to move on to verse 17. And this is going back to Abraham. Uh, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. Verse 18, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received in him in a figure. I mean, that took, imagine if God asked you to do that to your child, to offer up your child as a sacrifice, and that God was going to bring him back from the dead. I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't like that at all. That'd be uh, take big, big faith to do that. And he, Abraham was going to do it. We all know the story. He was right before he was about to come down. God stopped him, and seeing that he was going to do it, slay his only child, so and believing that he was going to bring him back from the dead. So uh, that takes a lot of faith, and that's and you, you may you may not think it, but imagine if. The God and the Creator is saying, "Hey, I'm going to give you all these things. Just kill your son, and he's going to be like, oh, he's got to come back from the dead." I mean, it's a lot going on there, you know. So we have uh, we get tried every day as well. Don't we we get tried with individuals that want to push our buttons. Trust me, I had a I had a I had a, a pretty uh, decent week this week. It wasn't. It was very trying, and. Uh, you know, and I got to stick with the Lord and keep praying. And, I'm, and uh, it, it just happens. All right. So we're going to kind of bounce down here. So Isaac and Jacob, um, we know there, verse 20, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was, when he was a dying, by faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worship, leaning upon the top of his staff. Uh, you got Joseph, by faith Joseph when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandments concerning his bones. Uh, and then you have Moses, um, his parents were faithful, they kept him alive, didn't listen to the king's commandment, and he had faith that he didn't want to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction, verse 25, 
with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And that's kind of like, we can kind of apply that. I mean, we want to... We want to listen to what God says instead of enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season. Um, and then verse 27, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. And verse 28, Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as the dry land which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. Um, yeah, Moses had a lot going on too. He was, <laughs> man, he had to bring out a whole million plus people. I mean, I don't know how much it was, but he had to go against Pharaoh. He was the son of, you know, the the stepson of Pharaoh, and he then he decided not to be part of them. And then God saying, hey, uh, you know, and he wasn't a very uh, what was he? He wasn't very bold. I don't think he was good with speech and God said and he had Aaron and God still sent him he still did it and then he went through the wilderness and then he went I mean imagine I don't know how Israel even had the audacity to even talk back in the wilderness because if I would have seen an ocean of the sea part I don't know man I'm, <laughs> you're walking through the sea and you see it and you're like how are they so you know stubborn like that because I mean I, I don't know I just um, and Moses had faith that God was going to do what he, what he said he was going to do and um, that's that's her strong will there so uh, moving forward you got Rahab the harlot she was uh, um, in Jericho and she hid the spies and then she was rewarded one of the few Gentiles I think were saved back then because it wasn't it was mostly all Israel um, then they have the many heroes of faith that goes down in verse 32 you got Samson Gideon Barak Samuel verse 33 who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouths of lions and uh, verse and uh, I'm gonna, gonna kind of talk about few that aren't mentioned but you got Esther the queen of, the, she's like the queen of courage if you guys remember Esther she was she saved her the Israelites from being from genocide and uh, that's the one that a woman you know for women they want to see that it's a powerful woman there she 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 could have been killed and she decided to do it and she saved her people from that and um, you have John the Baptist you know that he went to jail they cut his head off but he was prophesied and you know Lord's cousin but he was preaching and he was bold and they took him Stephen uh, he was offering the kingdom the for the third time and when they they got him man they stoned him you know uh, the 12 and I always think sometimes I just think of the 12 apostles I'm like Man, what an what an uh, what an honor to just be with the Lord Jesus Christ, like in His earthly ministry. Like you're sitting there talking with God, you know, every day you're with Him. It's like what an honor them guys had, you know. And the faith, I mean, they've seen the miracles and all that, but like it's crazy. Like if I was with the Lord and hanging out with Him. <laughs> yeah. like what's up <laughs> God, Jesus. I mean I think it's cool man the 12 they they had a and I could see why everybody wants to look at the 12 the way they do but um, it was his earthly ministry we follow the Lord Jesus Christ in his heavenly ministry he's in heaven right now sitting at the right hand of the father it's two different things alright um, so verse 30 verse 39 and all and these all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promises and um i i read something that it was from pastor kurt actually that that's that the promise is uh the resurrection so I, I just i don't know if it was the resurrection i don't know too much but i just wanted to close at that because that's the promise they're talking because it's singular they're talking about the resurrection but Oh, and two more I wanted to talk about. Job. Job is one of the ones that he lost everything. If you want to know 
about losing anything, you read the book of Job because he went through it all. You know, lost his family, all his wealth, lost his his health, and still came back. Never, never went against God, and uh, persevered. That's a strong, strong thing to read up on. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We remember them. I know if I would have seen a furnace, man, I'd be like, ooh, <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, they wanted. They weren't. They weren't bound down to no other god. And they stayed strong. They stayed with the God of the Bible. They didn't. They didn't uh, bow down. They said, "Why aren't you bowing down?" And they said, "Because we don't serve you. We serve the living God." Um, okay. So now that brings me to our last one, because we know our hero is the Lord Jesus Christ, but we have a hero in this dispensation, and his name is the Apostle Paul. And we were saving him for last because. A lot of people say we don't want to hear that Paul. Paul, who what Paul? He didn't. He's not part of it. No, the Apostle Paul is our apostle for today, and he was a hero, and he had great faith, great faith, and he is our pattern for today. Whether you want to believe it or not, um, he was a he once he was called Saul of Tarsus. He was a tyrant. And he was the worst of the worst. He. Um, was persecuting and killing uh, believers. Um, I mean, and for those that think that they're bad enough, or they're too bad, this guy was the, the worst, okay? So for anyone that thinks that they can't come to the Lord because they're too evil or too bad, this is our pattern. He was doing, he was killing people. So he's a guy that, he's, that the Lord seemed fit to save. Um, he was saved on the roads to Damascus. Uh, this guy went to different cities and towns, preaching the mystery, an apostle to the Gentiles, an apostle of grace. Um, he went to many pagan towns where they sought to kill him for preaching Christ resurrected. Resurrected. It was dangerous for him. He was going to these dangerous places, and he thought it fit. He was bold like that. He was like, "No, we're gonna, you know, we we live in America. There's dangerous places here, but like." This dude was going to, they, yeah, so it was dangerous, and he was brought before kings, and he suffered greatly, and um, he had beatings, he was, he died, and I think came back to life, I mean, there was many times, uh, they were like, he was like dead, and then he came back up, or some, I forgot, what, out of the jail or something, and it's uh, shipwrecked, stoned, many perils, even by his own peoples, his own peoples and other peoples. This is a true hero of, of the pattern that the Lord seemed fit, the Lord Jesus Christ. They're like, oh, you guys follow Paul, not Jesus. Jesus you has gave Paul the position for us to follow. We obviously follow the Lord Jesus Christ, but Paul is that guy that we're, that we're supposed to be patterning after and reading in his epistles. Because it's not Paul who wrote that. That's the Lord Jesus Christ who... who taught him that and by the Holy Spirit wrote them books. It's not just a guy, a random guy that you know, uh, he never gave up, he kept going rejoicing in his infirmities always gave God the glory even in prison even when he was in jail and didn't have anything, he always gave God the glory like I said, God saw him fit to use this man and he sees it fit to use you too even though you don't think you are, you have the strength. You can use the strength of the Lord. You can, you can do what the Lord has said. Just believe what He says, and do these things, and you'll feel. But I'm telling you, I used to be depressed, or you know, whatever it was, or just a no good person. You know, I was just a bum. I had no direction. And once I chose to serve the Lord. Yeah, that all changed. Yeah, I have direction. I have confidence, and uh, you know, I and I've been around the block or two, so I've seen what the world has to offer, and it ain't it ain't much. So, and like I said, the Lord Jesus Christ is our ultimate hero, and He's faithful. God is faithful to us. We've seen we heard seen the the verses, and um, all He wants you to believe is what First Corinthians. 15, let's go to that, and then we'll be done. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Because this is my first time up here, and I'm a little nervous, but 
I think I want to close it just by reading these words because these are the words. This is the gospel. There's, there's other gospels in the Bible, but this is the gospel that saves. For anybody that's listening, I just wanted to close it in this. And um, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So I just, just reading that, is, just want you to hear that you believe this, and you know that it's not of works. Today it's, it has nothing to do with works. It's just believing this. Believing the gospel. And that's your first. That's what you first do in your walk as a Christian. But we want to be heroes. We want to be heroes to each other. Uh, we want to be faithful. Be like these heroes of faith that we went through. They had all these tribulations and all these things. And God put that chapter in there for us to go back and, and reflect on that. Because that because that's it will help us in what we're going through, and so are you going to be faithful and be heroic today, or tomorrow, or the next day, or keep these truths in you? Because that's what the Lord asks. He wants us to be ambassadors, but we're also soldiers, and soldiers in Christ, and to fight for what's right and to defend the faith. So, and um, oh. Oh. So I leave you with this. Uh, uh, I went off. I went off. My so basically, and so people ask, so how do I do these things? Okay, so I have a list. Teach, preach, hand out tracts, support grace ministries, help out the local church, support grace believers, talk about Christ to anyone you meet, jail ministries, be a hero in the faith of grace today, and share it with friends and family online and um, you could do all these things to serve the Lord and um, I'm just so grateful that I have an opportunity to talk up here so hopefully you can take these truths and take them for your own because we, we serve the Lord Jesus Christ and that's again we give God the glory and um, just appreciative for all that so um oh well, we want to study his word rightly divided that's what we want to do because uh there's a wrong way to divide and we want to do and we and our mail comes from paul's epistle so thank you and uh I'll, I'll close in prayer heavenly father thank you for this opportunity to uh share the gospel uh help us to be faithful heroes to each other and to people that need to be saved because there's so many there's such a greater amount of people that are not saved compared to the saved and we have a duty and an, uh, and an hour and an honor to do these things and um, let us be strong and uh, confident throughout the week and uh, accomplish our goals and to uh, honor you and glory you in everything that we do and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. amen.